Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about the backbone of your fleet. A ship that's probably not going to have the notoriety of some of your bigger sort of cruisers, maybe even battleships you could say, but it's going to have an equal job of importance. And of course this is the sort of logistics and assault carrying craft. I mean, you can't have all your eggs in one basket. Even if you've got a small fleet, maybe of only 30 or so people, let's be realistic, you can't have thousands of people in one ship. You can't have hundreds of people in one ship. You're going to have to divide your people between the ships. So this is probably around a 30-man ship. One or two of them are actually piloting the vessel themselves. The rest are part of the assault squads that I'll get onto shortly. But moving on. Let's talk about designing these, some of these ships, and I get a lot of comments saying where do you get the inspiration from, what, what's going on, and how do you model them so well without having so many hiccups, and I, to be honest, I have so many hiccups, I have loads of problems, and there's some ships that just never make it for you to see your eyes, I mean, they have a good place in the LSG Museum of ships, but that's all they'll ever st say, to be honest. So, when it comes to building ships, what I like to tend to do is build a small ship mock-up, so this is a little bit of a model that I built, probably took about five minutes, and this exactly over here is what it became. So I'll talk about why it changed and the evolution of why it became that. So originally it was going to have four fire hangars, and then one large transport one at the rear, but then I went, in a survival situation, you're not going to be able to build something that big. It's going to take ages, and it's going to take a lot of manpower and a lot of resources, and it might be something you just might not have. So something like this to back up maybe one of your more expensive carriers is going to be something you want to do. So originally I would have had four fighter pods and obviously you can't have four fighter pods because fighters need to return to resupply and they need to be getting back into the fight. So this ship would have to be in the misc of the action. And then there was a few design errors with the engines and the placements of different cargo bays and I just decided to go, right, we're going to have to scrap that we'll scrap that and we'll put two big ones here and we'll put a small bay at the front and that's exactly what happened and then obviously as I started to build my ideas started to develop and so on so we've got these engines at the back I've tried to keep the engines separate from the hull so if engines do eventually start to explode or do serious things when they are hit by weaponry it won't cause much sort of damage so we've got that sort of v-shape hull as well of most sort of armoured vehicles today obviously it's to stop blasts from coming up below but I don't think that'll really make too much effect and you're probably thinking these doors you can just drive right in and blow the whole thing up well number one it won't be on the front line and number two there will be doors here to actually close and they'll shut and seal against these doors here so this will be a nice confined upper compartment so something really nice that's came in the last patch you might not have noticed it obviously you probably heard the little sounds of me buzzing around by now but there's this I will show you quickly so the interior block now if I can ever find it, there it is. That's not an interior block, there it is. It can actually be changed colour now, so we can have a red interior block, we can have a yellow interior block, and so on. And I think this is just really nice, just because look at this. You can do something like this, and you can turn it into like a nice sort of warning, sort of danger pad area. And that is something I quite like. So we've got the cargo bay in the front. So this is where troops will be waiting, say they die, they'll come out of a respawn generator here, They'll wait on here and then they'll begin and the, the ship will come in and then ferry them back to their assault target. So the assault target might be a ship, it might be a station, whatever we need to engage. So then we move on to thinking about hosting these sort of ships. So like I've said, we're not going to have hundreds, we're only going to have 30 or so people and we're dividing them up into the assault teams. So there's two concepts that I've got. So we've got the pilot up in there to pilot the small craft, so we'll have to divide that further. So say we have six or seven assault crafts, we have six or seven pilots, and then we divide that further because then we have a six-man assault team. And these guys are going to be prop. These are the guys that know what they're doing. And these are the people that are going to get grimy in that close quarters environment, in that hostile ship, hostile station, and have to bump off to capture the place. So we've got the pods there, and the concept is really simple. They mount up in here. They be ready, they get dropped, they pop out, run down the ramp, get straight into the action. And if they go down, they respawn on the ship and they just get ferried back into position. So, a quick question to you guys that you'll have to take into consideration is six or eight men teams. Someone recommended eight men teams the other day just because you need them numbers in close quarters combat. So you're coming down a corridor and someone's waiting at the other end. They might pick off the first two guys before you can get the drop on them to move up. 
Right, so let's continue looking around this ship. So in the rear compartment, we're just going to have one more transport hangar. And we're going to have the engine room back here. So this bit will be sealed off. So that is pretty much that part of the ship. So let's go to the front. And I'm just going to quickly talk about this front area. So in use of easy loading supplies, I'm going to have a ramp that comes down here, much like you see in Star Wars. And basically we'll be able to load all the troops on from a station, from a place. And obviously it's not finished yet, this ship. And there's a lot that needs to be done. But the size of it should make it creatable in a survival scenario without it being too much demanding on resources. Because that is going to be one of the key elements. You might have the people to mine it, but you might not have the actual people to stock the systems and then actually mine and keep your empire afloat by capturing, killing and doing all them awesome tasks because there's a lot of people out there that won't want to mine, they'll just want to get shooting. Right, so this brings us on to the next concept, colours and colour schemes. So this is a question that I really wanted to know is for the moment I've gone with this blue, white and dark blue and I'm not too sure about it. I'm not too sure if it represents the LSG Empire too well, but you'll have to tell me in the comments below what color schemes you think work. I was gonna mess with this yellow, maybe a yellow, black, and um, a few other colors. If you've got anything that really works well, I'd love to hear that. Okay, let's just move around the back of the ship. So this is obviously a support ship, light armor, not to do too much damage. And in tomorrow's video, I'm going to be going through tactics for assaulting ships and assaulting smaller platforms, maybe smaller vessels, and we'll just be either pirating them, in some words, showing you how to assault down corridors, and different little bits of methods that I think will be really relevant when it comes to assaulting some of these locations and capturing or destroying that ship. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll finish this ship off, and I'll see you some other time.